Most teens can be persuaded to work in the garden, cutting back shrubs and bushes, but not all of them are like Jake Martin from Cambridge, and even fewer end up drying out the sticks in a tumble dryer. It's a unit which turns a solid wood fuel into a gas fuel which I can run into any standard internal combustion engine. So what can you actually power with this? It means I can make power for a house um, out, of, out of the wood in the backyard. So how much does that actually mean in terms of a, of a real house? Overseas it, it's definitely taking off, especially in, um, in Sweden and places like that uh, where they've got a lot of wood uh, and they're, they're designing gasifiers like this but they're a lot bigger um, and, and they're not really practical for um, small application and I guess that's what I was aiming for uh, with my unit. This uh, gasifier uh, is designed to run a 660cc Subaru Samba engine um, at about 1,500 RPM um, and that will make about 3 kilowatts of electrical power for the house. That would mean it would run for about 4 or 5 hours um, a day and it would charge up the batteries and it would basically, that's enough power for the house uh, for that day. So what made you do this? Uh, well, I've always been interested in um, energy, alternative energy, and um, I've made um, a, lot of, a lot of things um, to do with alternative energy, um, and I guess this was just a natural progression. The, the outputs of the unit um, are, are very good for, for the environment. Um, the, the whole process is, is actually carbon um, negative, so it takes carbon out of the atmosphere. Um, now, mo most of the time a tree will die and it will let up the amount of carbon dioxide that it, um, that it took in while it was alive, um, but my unit uh, takes, um, takes wood and it heats it at a very high temperature and it locks that carbon in a very stable form, which can be put into the ground um, and stored for thousands of years un you know, underground, which means that you're actually trapping, you're having a carbon sink in the ground. So it's about uh, stewardship, I guess, really? Uh, yeah, I, I, I really do think that um, we will run out of energy. Uh, we've got this huge store of fossil fuels which can be used for so much better things than just burning it like plastics and, and stuff like that. It's just, it just seems like a waste to just shove it into an engine and burn it. Um, and I think that we've been given these natural resources which, um, which are renewable and, um, and you know, they seem like the better option. There's going to be a huge surplus of energy needed and, um, and it's not going to be able to, my gasifier isn't going to be able to, to solve the problem but I'm, I'm really hoping that it will help. Um, towards replacing fossil fuels. Okay, well let, let's go and have a look at it. Um, it's it's obviously there's a, a lot of work gone into it. How did you build it? Um, well, it, it was it was a bit of a labour of love. <laughs> um, in December of uh, 07, I started building it. Um, I got to build it down at uh, Wilkinson's Transport Engineers. They uh, let me use their workshop um, during uh, the holidays, um, and it took me about uh, up till August to complete it uh, and and yeah it was um, it definitely took a, a bit of time. <laughs> so how does it actually work? What does it what does it do? Okay then so you basically um, put the wood in the top. Mm -hmm. um, and th this is this isn't anything special? No this it's is just, just a hopper uh, I and mean, it's got oh. a it's got a um, spring release valve on it so that if any explosions happen inside of it it just um, pops up and then you come down to the air, um, air nozzles and that's where it gets blasted with, um, with air. Uh, you could react wood with uh, the full amount of oxygen and you could, you'd make carbon dioxide and water but if you reacted it with half that amount of oxygen you'd get instead of CO2 you get CO, basically taking oxygen off, instead of H2O you'd basically get H2. So what's coming out of this unit um, here is dirty gas um, with carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Um, it, it then goes into um, a blast tube which basically takes, um, takes the, uh, the ash and char and it basically gets rid of that. It also expands it so it doesn't revert back to soot. It then goes into a cyclone. Um, and the cyclone um, spins the ash and char out of it and puts it into the container down below and the clean gas gets taken off the top and it finally goes into a, a cooler which um, basically condenses out all the water and it also makes the gas more dense so that um, you can get more power out of it. Um, so then the, the gas comes out of there and goes 
It goes into my <laughs> flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> it goes into a flare, and then it um, comes out of there, goes through another tube. These tubes are from a, uh, a washing machine, actually. <laughs> Very useful. Um, and it goes into the small engine. Now, yeah. um, this engine here is just uh, to show the principle of it, just to show that the gas is, uh, is burning. It's actually not, um, this is only a small 49cc engine and, it, and this gasifier here will run a, a 660cc engine. When I was just a wee little full of health and joy My father homeward came one night and gave to me a toy a wonder to behold it was with many colors bright And the moment I laid eyes on it, it became my heart's delight It went, zip when it moved, pop when it stopped, whirr when it stood still I never knew just what it was and I guess I never will He's always been interested in technology and making things with his hands and uh, I guess we had pretty much no idea what he was making until we saw it, and then we still didn't know. We did know it was, it was energy related though, because his previous project was, um, was trying to run a car on 80% water, 20% petrol, which he actually succeeded in doing, it was a scooter. But um, yeah, so we knew he was going somewhere. The next stage would be something different, but related. So do you have to actually bolt things down in your oh, house? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> when we changed our washing machine, he just got so excited. He <laughs> tore it apart. So, and, yes. and he's got our old dryer so he can dry wood in it. I suppose that we've, we've almost sort of been trying to, to go the other way. We're, we're putting the brakes on him saying, you know, you need to have a bit more balance in your life because he, he can disappear and he's awfully focused, which is great, but um, we just wanted to make sure. I mean, there's a lot of other things. And he plays basketball, he rows. Um, he's pretty busy at school as well, so, yeah. He's not going to be with you for, for much longer. He'll be off soon. He won the Waikato Science Fair, the best in fair, and he was nominated to go to the Genesis Energy Realizer a Dream in Wellington, which is kind of like the National Science Fair, and he went down there with uh, 27, 28 other children, or kids, and he was one of the, the lucky uh, people to win a, a trip to Beijing. So there's four of them heading to Beijing in March uh, to a big giant science fair there. So. He's not actually taking his unit for obvious reasons, but he is, uh, you know, taking a lot of documentation and things. So he will be presenting it there. You must be very proud. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, very, yep. very. He's um, he's becoming more well-travelled than we are, <laughs> so, yeah. which is great. But it is wonderful to actually see him um, recognised and also to see um, the encouragement from people actually out in the in the community as well. And he's joined an, an environmental group now in Cambridge to make Cambridge sustainable. And he um, has a lot of, lot of mentors and, and people who are really encouraging him. It's wonderful.